Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with frozen vanilla custard. That's right, ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Which is exactly why we didn't get any. I mean, you can't expect to make that much noise in an ice cream parlor and still get served. So just to be safe, we're going to learn how to make frozen vanilla custard at home. Which, by the way, also goes by the name of French vanilla ice cream. Not to be confused with American style ice cream, which unlike this much richer version does not contain any eggs. But anyway, we'll review all that in the blog post. For now, let's go ahead and get started with five large egg yolks in a mixing bowl, to which we will add a pinch of salt. Yes, believe it or not, you do need a little bit of salt in ice cream. And then, of course, we're also going to need some sugar, and definitely more than a little, but not quite as much as your typical French vanilla recipe. And then what we'll do is grab a whisk and mix this until it goes from sort of dark, golden, and thick to something much smoother and paler, and sort of a little bit shiny. And that's probably going to take you a minute or two. But don't worry too much about time. Just keep whisking it until it looks something like this. And once that's set, all we have left to do is whisk in our hot milk and cream mixture, which is going to be the next step. So we will simply set that aside and head to the stove, where we're going to add some milk and heavy cream to a heavy bottom saucepan. And we will set that over medium heat. And other than maybe giving this a stir while it comes up to temperature, there's not a lot to do other than just keep an eye on this. And as far as the amounts go here, I prefer a ratio of one part milk to two parts cream. So that's what I'm going with today. But using equal parts milk and cream is very common. So basically, as long as you end up with three cups total, you can use any proportions you want. I mean, you are, after all, the kernel mustard of your frozen vanilla custard. And speaking of having a clue, I should probably explain how long to cook this. And that's going to be until it just starts to simmer. Okay, not before it simmers. And not once it's at a rolling boil, but just until we see little bubbles breaking the surface. Which is pretty much what I have happening right here. As soon as we see that, we're going to quickly and safely pull it off the heat. And we'll go ahead and add it to our egg and sugar mixture, but not all at once. What we'll do is just start with one ladle, and we'll whisk that in. And then once that's been fully incorporated, we'll go ahead and whisk in another. And what we're doing here is gradually raising the temperature of the yolks so that they don't scramble. So I like to temper the mixture, to use the correct term, by whisking in a couple ladles first. And then we can just go ahead and dump the rest in without any danger of coagulation. And even if you don't know what coagulation means, just by the sound of it, you know it's not good. So we'll go ahead and add our hot cream milk mixture. And then once that's set, we're ready to introduce our last ingredient, some pure vanilla extract. And yes, I do prefer this stuff to use in a vanilla bean, at least for this recipe. And I don't have time here, but I will attempt to defend my position in the post. And then once our vanilla is in, what we need to do at this point is cool this mixture down, which I prefer to do on an ice bath. So we'll carefully set the bowl with our mixture on top of a bigger bowl filled with ice water. And we'll give that a stir every once in a while. And in just about 15 minutes or so, our mixture should be fully cooled. So I guess if you want, you could just let it cool on the countertop. But the ice bath is much more efficient. Plus, those ice cubes in your freezer are probably getting stale. That's why your last Manhattan didn't taste that good. And then what we'll do once our mixture has been chilled is transfer that into a pitcher for a couple reasons. First of all, this will make it a lot easier to pour into our ice cream maker, but also this takes up less room in the fridge. And why that's important is because what we're supposed to do here is wrap this up and refrigerate this overnight, which they say makes the ice cream taste a lot better. Okay, at least that's what they say. I've actually never been able to wait that long. So yes, officially we're gonna say for you to leave this overnight, but let's not kid ourselves. You're probably not going to either. But regardless, whether you leave it overnight in the fridge or not, this mixture has to be ice cold before we work with it. And by work with it, I mean make ice cream using one of these type machines. And how this works is there's a bowl that you keep in the freezer that we will place on this base. And then into that, we'll place this plastic paddle, also known as a dasher. And then we'll pop on the plastic cover. And that's it for setup. We'll go ahead and turn it on and pour in our ice cold mixture. And then at this point, there's really nothing left to do except wait. And how these machines work is that our mixture freezes to the inside of that canister. And as it spins around, the dasher sort of scrapes off the frozen parts, mixing it into the unfrozen parts, until eventually, theoretically, everything is frozen. But not solid. Otherwise, the engine would burn out, and we'd only be able to use the machine once, which is not ideal. OK, we only want to go as far as basically soft serve stage. Okay, something about like this. That really is as far as we want to go, or should go. 
And if I had to guess, it's going to take about 20 minutes or so. And then what we'll do once our mixtures reach this point is turn off the machine and we'll remove the cover and dasher and of course scrape that down with a spatula. And then as fast as humanly possible, we'll transfer this into some kind of container that we can move into the freezer. And I guess it's optional, but I do like to top with a piece of plastic and sort of press that onto the surface. And that's it, we'll go ahead and place on the lid and transfer that into the freezer for at least a few hours or until firm enough to serve. And this is exactly what mine looked like about four hours later. And I'm gonna grab a spoon to see how we did. And it certainly looks like frozen vanilla custard, also known as French vanilla ice cream. But does it taste and feel like that? And I'm very happy to report it did. Just an amazing, deep, decadent vanilla flavor without being too, too rich. So I was very happy with how this came out, and I decided to dish some up and do something a little more presentable. Which reminds me, in the business, these are not called ice cream scoopers. They're actually called dishers. But anyway, we'll go ahead and dish up with a disher, something we made with a dasher. And as much as I love the flavor of this, I'm even more impressed with the texture, which really is the hardest thing about making ice cream. Okay, we want our ice cream to be firm, but not hard and icy. And yet at the same time, we don't want it too soft and sticky. So to summarize, I think we nailed it. And yes, in case you're keeping score at home, I am more of a cup person than a cone person. Unless, of course, we're talking about a homemade ice cream cone. If only there was some video available to show you how to make those. So yes, I have it on pretty good authority that the next video might be how to make your own ice cream cones. So definitely stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I really do hope you give this amazing frozen vanilla custard a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.